Hey, I'm here with uh, Just Cam in Season 3 of Shuffle Bus Tournament. Um, this is an open deck list, so we know what each of us bring to the table here. Um, I'm bringing my Noah deck with Wolves, Salamander, Monks, Strengthen, Gates Thrown Open, and Frostbite. He's bringing a Koji Fallen deck. So I have to keep his battlefield from getting too wide and racking up those Fallen tokens. So I start with the um, Salamander Monk and the Summon Masked Wolf. He meditates a Raptor Herder and plays a Psychic Vampire. Now, normally I like to go real aggressive this first round and try to get an attack in, but now I can't because if I kill the Psychic Vampire, then I have to discard a card out of my hand. So I have to pivot a little bit here. So I bring out another book, Strengthen, or another Ready Spell, Strengthen. Then I go ahead and bring out a Wolf. Uh, it's his first Fallen book there. And I'm going to exhaust that Fallen book using Noah's ability. So it cost me one basic dice. And now I'll bring out a Salamander Monk. So I know I'm not going to be able to attack with Strengthen and then use Gates because of that uh, Psychic Vampire. I have Frostbite in the list and I don't use it at all the whole game. Um, I, I need it for an additional main action. I notice if I don't have it out there, I run out of main actions. So, but my, my draws were pretty um, lucky this round, so I never needed to use the Frostbite. So he, oops, switches cards there, brings out Strength and of his own. Now that I'm out of dice, I'm going to attack his... Psychic Vampire, which he blocks Koji. I believe here he's thinking about it. Yeah, there he goes. And then I meditate one. Now he plays his Expand Energy. Now, he has four dice left, so those dice, those two cards there, I'm kind of hesitant on, um, and it makes me play a little more cautious. Later he told me he drew two Lick Wounds. So I'm thinking about it, I decided to pull out another Salamander here. Started to do a wolf and then changed my mind. I want to kind of stretch out his plays. I know he's low on dice, and, and so I, or he's not low on dice, and I am, and he has more cards than I do, so I don't want to burn up all my actions and let him swing free afterwards. So he's going to frog ping my wolf. Nothing not I can do about that, so it goes away. That's using the nature dice ability. Now I can tack into his vampire. Now the Koji's are used as block, and since I exhausted the Fallen Book, it doesn't charge up. 
and then I bring out another wolf. So I'm down to one power dice and he still has three dice showing. So he meditates a hammer knight. And then he passes main. So I don't want him to have up that uh, power symbol. So I go ahead and step down his power symbol and his time symbol. And then I pass main. And then that happened to be end of round since he just meditated last round too. So that one kind of caught me by surprise. I wasn't really paying attention to... I kind of forgot that he passed main. I don't think I could have gotten a better roll or draw from this hand here, considering what I was facing. So he plays his first or second fallen book. And then he meditates a Sleeping Widows. And sends it back to me. So right now I still have Board Advantage with a Wolf and two Salamander Monks. But if I take out his Rising Horde, then he's going to get two Fallen and charge up. So I send out a Fire Archer instead to go ahead and ping for one damage. And then I'm um, going to bring out a Masked Wolf book. So I'm calculating here which dice I need to bring. Now I have my two Wolf books. I have the Focus 1 ability. He brings out another Rising Horde. So now he has an opportunity to really populate the battlefield relatively quickly. So I meditate a Battle Seer and a Gates Thrown Open. And I go ahead and put down the Molten Gold because I figure my best path is just to put a lot of pressure on him. So I already got the board presence at the moment and I can't give up that so putting life point pressures really matters. Uh, he attacks my Rising Horde or with his Rising Horde but I do not counterattack because I don't want to charge up his Fallen Books or give him any um, any extra Horde or any extra Fallen out there. So there I go ahead and attack with a Salamander Monk straight to Koji. And he's trying to think here of what he wants to do with that. And he ends up blocking with his Rising Horde. Which kills my Monk and brings out the Salamander Monk Spirit. And it gets him two Fallen, but I'm thinking about the, the Rising Horde bringing two Fallen, so I put out two Salamander Monks, but i fix that here in a second. I'm just trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, I guess. And charged up his Fallen Books. So, since I have a focused Wolf Book, I'll go ahead and play a power symbol in a class and bring out two wolves because it gives me an extra side action. Now he still has quite a bit of dice up on me. And since I don't have any more ceremonials, if I need to crescendo, I'm going to crescendo the choke. So I'm holding those back. So here he goes and brings two more fallen out. Then he meditates a fire archer. And 
I want to send a salamander monk into a fallen. He blocks with Koji. So I'm exhausted there, my monk is. And I go ahead and use Noah's, oh, I meditate one, I guess. So he kills my, or attacks at my wolf, but I take that damage, that one damage onto Noah. So again, I'm up four units to three. But my monk spirit can't block, so it's really kind of a three to three. So I attack my uh, fire archer into his fallen. He can no longer Koji block. Oh, he's correcting a meditation earlier. He meditated and didn't change his dice, so he's fixing that now. So we're going back to the attack here of the fire archer versus the fallen, and they both die. And then here I go ahead and do I have any use for oh, meditate one. One of these times I use Noah's ability, but must be the next round. Next hand. Next turn. That's what it is, called turns. So now he sends his fallen into my wolf and they both die I kill off his last fallen with my monk spirit now he's going to pay a ceremonial and take one damage to recur a hammer knight and then he's going to play the hammer knight so that's four dice cost and this is a big swing in the game right here so one of my problems is I play fast faster than I should and I start to crescendo him and I realize oh crescendo only does three damage and hammer knight has four so I pull it back real quick but it does influence I think later on that he knows I have that crescendo in my hand so he doesn't play large units knowing that I can take him out so I just use my strength and wolf to directly attack the hammer knight and since Koji's already blocked there's not it's just uh not anything they do so he just attacks back and we kill each other but just cams a pretty good sport letting me pull that back besides the game's just for fun and that's what's nice about this community so he frog pings his own rising horde to get two fallen and then he charges up his two books so there he attacks uses one of them to attack. He knows I have quite a few dice, so he wants to leave a blocker up. Uh, there I finally use the no ability on the strengthen. I think he missed that play. He probably should have strengthened there and attacked for three. Since I couldn't have blocked it. But I think we both, mo both missed a step here and there. So I go ahead and pull out another Salamander Monk. Exhaust the book here. So he brings out some more Fallen. So 
So now he's got the board advantage of having three guys able to attack to my one. So I ping him down there to lessen the damage that I'll take. So he just dies and allows my guy to exhaust as opposed to turning into a spirit. And then swings for two. Now he, go, he uses Koji's ability to put a status token onto a Fallen. And we start round three. I would thought he had a standard bearer or something inside his deck for charging that uh, Fallen. So again, another good roll on my end. And with his board, I get a Nature's Wrath. So knowing that he has board advantage, that uh, Nature's Wrath is really going to help me out. And it will help clear off my monks here that I'm going to send in to attack. So I'm going to send two of them. Now if he blocks and kills both of them, I lose blockers, but he knows I won't have two fresh units, and he's only going to have one blocker. So he only blocks with one here. So I get a spirit that's fresh, and then I have one exhausted. But he plays uh, Summon Sleeping Widows, and then I side action Noah's ability just to exhaust strengthen. And I think that was key in the game is keeping that strength and exhausted. So now he is sitting at uh, four units. And I only have a Miss Spirit that cannot block. Then it's his turn. But he knows I can, with two wolf heads and a focus book, I can bring out two wolves, strengthen and attack all at the same time. So he doesn't want to send everybody. That's six damage just immediately, just from the wolves. And he's going to send in an attack here. He's just trying to calculate which ones he wants to send. So that's a status token, not an exhaustion token. So the wool, uh, the spiders are two ones and the fallen's are one one, so that's coming at me with five damage. And then he uses flash strike, which does another four damage, which is a big hit. Now, had I not exhausted strength, then he would have sent that one as well. So that was five, six, seven, eight, nine damage. And with strength, then it would have been 11. So it saved me two points of damage there. So still a big hit, and it swings big in his favor here. Um, but then he recurs a raptor herder. So I was debating on whether or not to Nature's Wrath and clear his board, because he does have two uh, fallen up there, and I have one guy who can't block. But once he does that, I realize he's going to be playing that raptor herder next round so i'm just going to hold on to nature's wrath so i just need a main action which is why most of the time i use the the frostbite just give me a main action there but i send in the uh, monk spirit directly to koji for one damage so here he's calculating What to bring in. There's the raptor herder with his pet raptor. So now the board's severely in his favor with him having first turn next round. And then he meditates a rising horde, a uh, lick wounds 
Hammer Knight and a Swift Messenger. So he rolls four dice up. I really don't know what he wants to do with those four dice, but I don't want him to have them. So my illusion, uh, that's probably the wrong call. I probably should have brought out two wolves, um, but I wanted to play somewhat defensively and roll down two of those dice. Now he's still probably, probably going to use them for Fallen or whatever, but... Uh, so it probably should have been a wolf instead of rolling his dice down. So here's the Nature's Wrath. And it wipes his board. And it takes out my Exhausted Monk Spirit and my Exhausted Monk, which gives me a Lively Monk Spirit. And since he only has one uh, ally in the rest of Conjurations, he only gets one token on each of his Fallen books. So... That was a big swing in my favor, that Nature's Wrath there. So i am got more cards and more dice at this stage, and a unit on board. So things are slightly in my favor. Uh, we talk about this a couple times during the match of how it swings. So he pays his dice to bring out two more Fallen. And then I start calculating here the value of having more wolves out there. Um, but I drew the Flash Archer. And the Flash Archer has, you know, it is for attack. But it, with only two health, it normally doesn't get a lot of play because it dies relatively quickly. But looking at his dice spread here, uh, I know he doesn't have an ice trap, or at least I don't think he has an ice trap. Um, I can use the Flash Archer to clear his board once again. And then if he turns around and brings more Fallen, I could use the Flash Archer to, to drop them out and off the board. So she's exhausted, but he has a clear board. Recurs a another raptor herder and plays it. Get him some blockers on board. With life being five to five, it's pretty close game still. And passes back to me. So I'm looking at the crescendo here on whether or not I can take out two of his units and do enough damage. I'm not quite at lethal yet. So I go ahead and attack one at his raptor herder because my monk spirit can't block anyways. So I might as well use it. Uh, Koji runs back to his hand, but uh, he sends him out to continue the battle. So he can't use the group tactics on the Raptor just yet. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. And then I side action and bring out a wolf with my last um, illusion dice. But I don't have another side action to do, so I just pass back. So he has one attacker on board to my one attacker. Uh, he passes to me. I'm going to bring out a Salamander Monk. So I pass over 
to Just Cam, and uh, he's looking at his board and realizing that I have board advantage starting into the next round with him not having any um, any fallen charges and not having dice to bring out a lot of them, um, and me still having some cards in hand with one dice. He knows I do have the crescendo. He passes back to me by skipping his main. So he's worried about me crescendoing and attacking with a strengthened unit. So a strengthened wolf would uh, be lethal at this stage. So I'm looking at that too. So I attack on his raptor, and he just allows it to die, and I exhaust here. Now, I, I was really considering using the crescendo at that stage, but with two dice left, I didn't want to uh, jump ahead and use it just yet, because I don't know what he still has. So there he plays his two dice. He plays Lick Wounds, he heals two, removes exhaustion token off with Koji, and then he'll exhaust Koji, to put an exhaustion token, uh, to put a status token on his fallen book. So now I'll send my wolf a crescendo. for four damage into the uh, into Koji. So I strengthened, crescendoed, and attacked for four. So had he not used that Lick Wounds, that would have been fatal there. But he gets more tokens, and he passes to me. I pass back, and we start round four. So we're clearing off tokens. He accidentally clears the tokens off of his uh, Fallen, but we correct that in just a moment. And again, a very good draw to opportune draw at this stage. Um, so with my units on board and five life, there's nothing can do lethal this round and I can bypass any units that he'd put out there with a Molten Gold. So, he's looking at what he has, and as he starts to play here, he'll go ahead and play some units. He'll even ask me, he's like, I bet you drew a Molten Gold, didn't you? I said, yeah, and I'll, I'll toss it out there. So, um, that's the end of it. And, uh, Still close match. He had me down to five, and just a misplay here or there, and it could have easily went to Cam. But good competitor, and uh, always enjoy playing against him and playing in the Shuffle Bus tournaments. So with that, I'll be signing off and uh, logging my victory into chat. Have a good one. Hey, like and subscribe if you would, please. I'd appreciate it.